Or mother, Marianne Williamson, crushed it in the second Democratic debate, so I'll be talking about that this week, as well as some late 90s nostalgia. On Jinka Jabo. She gets called Orb Mother for some of the wonky things that she says, and that's her word now, wonky, and I really like that. And I use that as sort of a dog whistle to the other, uh, uh, we call it the Orb Gang members, and I joined um, uh, Marion Williamson's dank meme stash because I wanted uh, just to have a closer look, and it turns out that I'm certainly not the only person who's there, just ironically. But it is amazing that during the second debate, when she was on stage, she got lots and lots of attention, and um, I believe she's going to rise in the polls as a result. And she distinguished herself from uh, Bernie and, and Warren by saying that she is not for a Medicare for all system. And then she again quipped that we have a sickness care system, which others, I think, were saying. It's amazing how other candidates have latched onto her language and her idiolect, and I think that's one of her main strengths is just the way that she talks. And of course, people make fun of it, but people made fun of the way Trump talked. But, you know, she can really uh, command a crowd and everything. The problem, of course, is, you know, as a former Course in Miracles student, I can really attest that her beliefs are a bit wonky. And actually, I don't know, since Course students never talk about it, but I think it's very closely related to Christian science. And in fact, Helen Shookman, who scribed the uh, A Course in Miracles, was a, uh, her mother, I believe, was a student of Christian science, although, although they were Jewish. But uh, she was certainly familiar with that book. And that does promote this idea that sickness is an illusion, which it says directly in A Course in Miracles and in A Return to Love, which has been circulating this uh, page that says, well, uh, God doesn't impose sickness on us, we impose it on ourselves, and we can overcome the illusion of sickness by saying that um, it's love. <laughs> and so it's appropriate that she would say, well, we don't want Medicare for all, but she did support uh, student loan forgiveness and all that, which I think is pretty cool. So, I mean, there's good and bad, but again, like her style, her way of approaching it and distinguishing herself from the two strongest candidates on that stage, uh, uh, Bernie and Pocahontas, like distinguishing herself in that sense, but then uniting with them and the other talking about, frankly, forgiving student loan debt and all that, I thought was really cool. And her voice, too, she's got that sweet Texas accent that, uh, you know, I could just, I could listen to it for hours. That said, I'm not going to vote for her, and I don't think anyone should. There was the, so that page from A Return to Love, which I've started reading again. I've, I've leafed through it. I'm definitely going to do a review for this channel because you guys seem to like my Marianne Williamson videos. But there's a page from it that says directly, um, sickness is an illusion. And then there's this uh, uh, emerge from the gay community or something. She was doing what her supporters have said is palliative care, but others have said that she discouraged um, vulnerable, vulnerable patients from taking medicine. What it comes down to is, uh, well, there's a difference between saying, telling someone not to take medicine and telling them that uh, medicine isn't necessary. And that's really kind of a sad dis dis difference, and that's uh, faith healing. And when we look at children who died who were Christian scientists, for example, or in other faiths where the parents decided, no, prayer can, can do this. We're not rejecting medicine, we're just choosing something else. You know, medicine kills people. I mean, why not turn to prayer? The problem is, scientifically, um, we've shown that prayer simply doesn't help sick patients. And, uh, you know, I pray, I think people should pray, but it, it shouldn't be with the expectation that you're going to miraculously cure someone like that or heal them. And again, it's that uh, tie-in with Christian science, which Course in Miracles never addresses directly, but uh, in the new, they released a new edition of that book just a couple years ago, and I downloaded it, a very bad version of it, but 
I know that in the complete annotated, I think it's the purple book, they call it, um, it does talk about Christian science, but in sort of a dismissive, lofty, like, well, she didn't take it. I mean, she, she'd, she had this idea kind of, while still plagiarizing from Mary Baker Eddy extensively. And so I think we are right to worry about her idea that you can just um, love things away and, and, and cure sickness and all that. I mean, there's certainly a place for the miraculous. But then she says, oh, I don't know why people are mischaracterizing me by saying that I hurt these AIDS patients so that I'm a Scientologist or something. Well, yeah, not Scientologist, Christian scientist. There is that mix-up, you know. I, I lived with a family of Christian scientists for a while. I practiced that religion for a while. And I've, I've been to the setting, the Mary Baker Eddy house and all that. And I know that that's often confused with Scientology because I, I would tell people about it and they'd be like, oh, L. Ron Hubbard and Xenu and aliens and all that. Of course, I believe A Course in Miracles is just Scientology light. It's Scientology with new lessons every day instead of every week. And uh, instead of the Bible, it's just its own book. You know, that's, that's all you need. Yeah, read the Bible. It talks about the Bible, but... It's its own book, kind of like the Quran mentions the Bible, mentions the Jewish, and even I think the Christian scriptures at, at one point. But it says that, well, this is, this is the correct book. Don't trust those others. She might be the nominee. I think she has a very good chance at it, and it has, it has a lot to do with just her character and her attitude and the fact that she is framing things differently, and she is willing to say weird things and she is willing to grab the spotlight and she is willing to be memed and I think she really understands the uh, political climate we're in and she's able to handle it well. Like She's the only one on that stage who I think really uh, like style-wise could even match Trump. So as an ironic supporter, as someone who doesn't like her philosophy, I still support her in that way anyway. It's, it's very odd how my mind has been changing about her over time. But I, I predict that when they release the next polls, she's going to have this huge surge and uh, Kamala Harris uh, is going to tank. She's going to take that role. Uh, Buttigieg is just going to stay in the same spot. Uh, Biden, I think, did quite poorly. Everyone was taking jabs at him. And, uh, but he still has the most name recognition. Uh, Obama hasn't come out and supported him. Then he says, Biden says, uh, he takes credit for what Obama did, but then when someone uh, criticizes one of Obama's policies, he's like, well, I, you know, I wasn't the president. Yeah, okay, Mr. Biden, I don't think you have a snowball's chance in hell. But I do think that in the world we're living in, and, you know, I've been skeptical from the very beginning, but I've been quite interested in watching this whole thing take place. I really think that Marianne Williamson has a shot. And uh, go Orb Gang, as, as an ironic uh, supporter, um, non-voter, uh, who actually likes Trump, I, I, I really have to say that she's quite something. Over and out.